What do you call a magical owl? Houdini. What's going on, YouTube? It's 8 o'clock, which means we're inside the Hollow City, inside of Cold Harbor, to go over our first of two golden vendors. Now, this week is an interesting week because we have Briarheart stuff, reached things, and you might think to yourself, this is either worthless or awesome. Where does it fall? Somewhere in between. We talk about these things for two reasons. One, you might want to put these bad boys in your own house, and to that, the value is however you assess it. Other reason is if you want to potentially resell these items, what is the resell value of these items? Now, generally, reach items do not do super well. However, these reach uh, corpses, little things, actually do surprisingly well. And as you can imagine, people are pretty uh, likely to buy a gigantic mammoth skull because it looks pretty dope. As well as 2.5k for these tiny tents is a steal. And the important thing, too, is if you play on PC, where inflation on gold is so high, you're pretty much guaranteed to profit off of any of these. On consoles, it can be a little bit more difficult. And before we jump into the second vendor, which is going to be inside of our Cyrodiil camp, just a quick thank you for passing 19,000 subscribers. We hit that milestone last night, and I just want to thank you guys. It's an absolutely crazy milestone. I'm just happy that we hit it. But let's jump into the Golden. And our first set comes from Unhallowed Grave, which means it's not available to be resold. When you deal critical damage with a martial melee attack, which actually just means anything that uses stamina, that's what martial melee attack means, summon a lesser Aegis for 11 seconds, after 2.5 seconds, a lesser Aegis spin this blade, dealing 2,944 bleed damage every 1 second, could occur every 12 seconds. Whew. So it's, it's funny because it does quite a few interesting things here, and it gives weapon and spell crit and then weapon and spell, which I think actually pairs pretty decently with it. It's funny because Aegis Caller to me is a really good set. The problem that Aegis Caller has is it's not the best set. It probably ranks firmly in the top 10 uh, for best PvE sets if you're looking to do DPS, in my opinion. But some might even put it as high as top 3, top 4. But the problem is, is if you're looking to suggest something, do you want to suggest the third best thing or do you want to reserve it for the top 2? You know, it, it can become very tricky when you have a set that's really good, but it's not the best. And PvE DPS is really something that you generally want the best of the best. I do think this is a great set. I think that if you got this set, it would allow you to start farming other amazing DPS sets. Uh, but I don't know if I would buy it from a golden vendor. But that's for you to decide based on your ease of access. And if you just want to have access to two free uh, gold rings that you could buy with AP or gold and not have to upgrade them with your upgrade mats or farm them from a dungeon... And then you can just fill out the rest of the sticker book to get the rest of the pieces. That's up to you. Next up, we have one of the funnest stealth build uh, sets in the game. Use it for its four piece. Reduce the radius so you can be detected while sneaking by two meters. And reduce the cost of sneaking by 10%. Funny enough, that's actually really cool. You can make stealing from guards, people's houses, thieving routes, all sorts of things. Super easy. Uh, I actually plan to make a thieve build, like an actual build with just different thieving sets. However, you might not, you might notice though, and think to yourself, well, Jake, does it need to be gold? In fact, it being gold makes no difference, essentially. The meat, it doesn't, it doesn't become 1.75 meters if it's purple, it does not affect that. What it does affect is the five, which is while you are crouching and not bracing, you restore 670 magic gun stamina and heal for 804 health every second. You're going to find a utilization for that. Probably not. You're probably going to wear this as a four-piece. Maybe if you're doing a stealth build, you wear this as a five-piece just to get really fast stam regeneration. But overall, eh. Hulking Draugr is one of my favorite ESO sets because it is so simplistic. It's like Crafty Upheek. It just gives you stamina. I'm a huge fan of this set. I think it's one of the best in slot for Ravenwatch. I think that as we start looking to sets that are going to be really good for the potential PvP update in the future... We got to think there could be a no proc version. There could be a proc version. It could be some sort of weird mixture of both of them. This is one of the best non proc PvP sets in the game. Non proc basically meaning a set doesn't do anything except just gives you a bunch of stats. For example, uh, this is a proc set because we have to actually do something. We're going to do this big long text box here versus Hulking Draugr. It's just like, here you go, have some stamina. And I think that that gives bodes it well. This is not a set, unfortunately, that you're able to resell. It comes from a dungeon drop. So from that aspect of it, it's not the greatest. But 
generally these are the sets that I would encourage you to gold out, you know, because you're going to get extra value on each of your two, three, four, and five pieces uh, pretty significantly. Next up is the high aisle set. You could probably uh, guess, I'll give you three guesses to where that drops from. And it is an Overland set, so you can resell this. You can purchase it from other players to complete it. When you are healed while in combat, you increase your weapon and spell damage by 369 for five seconds. Why is this significant? Significant for two reasons. One, this is an unnamed buff, so it could stack with anything. You could stack this with Major, Savagery, Sorcery, Blundagery, whatever. Stack all those things together. Second reason why is there's not really a cooldown for this. You'll notice that. Increase your weapon and spell damage by 369 for five seconds. Get healed again. Boom. It just keeps on going. So this is also a proc set, by the way, for those of you who are confused about proccing, no proccing, because it's a when you are healed. So think if, when something occurs, that's a proc. So that's how you know if it's a proc set or not. Is this good? This is another thing that I think is a difficult. 369 weapon and spell damage in a PvP scenario is not a whole lot compared to how many other sets are there. Could I see this being used? Yes, I would give this set a solid B if I was looking to spec it out and I was like randomly assigned this as a set. I would say it's above average, it's a B. Next up, we have a monster set shoulder, which is really pivotal because it means that you don't have to roll and waste any of your undaunted keys to get it. When you deal martial melee damage, what is that? You'll have learned about that earlier in the video. You call upon a primal spirit that mauls the closest enemy in front of you after 1.3 seconds for 7,036 physical damage. This effect occurs every 6 seconds. This set was pretty much one of the best in slot DPS sets uh, for Stam uh, DPS. And I think that it somewhat still maintains that good standing. The problem is, is that since this set has come out, we've got Mythics. We've got new monster sets. We've got hybridization being pushed further and further uh, to where stamina characters can easily use magicka abilities. Because of that, sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where this is really like a B plus set. However, there's a lot of A's. You know, there's a lot of really good monster sets that are brand new or mythics that really just kind of can make this outshine. But I would still firmly put this as a B plus set. And if you want to go out and complete this set and get the full kit and caboodle, I would recommend doing so. And it, it comes from Celine's Web. If the, the names have been recently giving it away, but just in case, that's where it comes from. So if you complete that on Veteran, boom, you get it. Next up, we have Balkan Scoria from City of Ash 2. It is one of those sets that I think is also really great. If being a shoulder is fantabulous, it's base game. If you don't have access to DLCs, I can highly encourage you guys to get this because you can almost use this for any type of content. I see people using this in PvP, PvE. If you're locked to the base game, Valken Scoria is a great option for you because when you deal damage with a damage over time effect, even 8% chance to summon a Meteor, the Meteor does damage, and then guess what? It burns them because Meteors are, I guess, hot which makes sense, I guess. So why this is so good is that it's easy to get for the base game. You have a lot of access to use. Damage over times is great for PvE content, but it can also be really good on things like Dragon Knights, even things such as Templars, Arcanists, Wardens, depending on how you want to build them. You can easily weave in a lot of damage over time effects. And because of that, you can then weave in this set. The, the number one way to utilize it is obviously a Dragon Knight. They love to boost their flame abilities and their flame damage and all these other put dots on people till the end of time. That is definitely where the utilization primarily lies, and I can definitely tell you it works out. But everyone, thank you guys so much again for watching. This has been our breakdown of the items here today. Out of curiosity, do you guys like when I give number scores or grades to different types of things? We've kind of experimented with it throughout the time periods? Do you like to know more information? Do you like the videos a little bit more snappier so they're a little bit shorter so you don't have to kind of skip around? Let me know in the comments below. We are still doing our three giveaway drawings, although spoiler, we did give out one of them in the last video. All you have to do to enter in the final two are very simple. Stick around to the end of the video, answer the question, and be subscribed. We are on the road to 20,000 subscribers. We just hit 19,000, which is fantabulous. So thank you guys so much again. I'll catch you later. Have a great weekend.
Bye, guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Oh, you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you. Question of the day today is, what is your ESO favorite zone? And also, just as a bit of a disclaimer, because I might have to start doing this here soon, uh, we might have duplicative questions, questions that have to be re-asked so I can get enough of a comment survey pool uh, to get to that. I might also just start rounding answers up. So say, for example, I have 50 responses, just multiply every answer by two. Uh, so I'm just trying to figure out how to do that. Uh, but that is the question of the day. What is your favorite ESO zone? Thank you guys so much again for watching, and I'll catch you later. Bye, guys.